Hello, welcome to Ensemble Conversations with me, Mark Kilmurray. This morning we're talking to Ben Wood. Ben and I would have been in a rehearsal room doing Kenny, and so we're going to talk all things Kenny. Just a reminder, if you have any questions at all for Ben, please uh, send them in and we'll ask him live, on air. Ben, are you there? Hello, Hello mate. <laughs> how are you? Yeah, good buddy, how are you? I'm good. How's isolation suiting you? Uh, yeah, look, um, I have young children, so... <laughs> As uh, as I'm yeah. sure some of our uh, <laughs> listeners and watchers will um, understand, it's got its yeah. challenges. Yeah, <laughs> yes, that's right. All in one room on an iPad while you do this. <laughs> yeah, at the moment they're um, yeah, <laughs> they're all, all the different devices yeah, trying yeah. to do everything. But look, I mean, I, it's been good to spend time with the kids. I guess one. They shaved my head for me, which was because we kind of got to the point where we were like, what are we going to do this weekend? And so that's yeah. what happens. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the nice thing is spending more time. I, I know it's, it can be challenging, but uh, for me with my son, it's sort of, oh, well, it's quite nice to go for a walk or a scooter or whatever it might be in the middle of the day. Yeah, I, I agree. And it's interesting seeing so many people out as well kind of doing that. There's, yeah. there's, there's, a, there's a unique... I don't know, um, camaraderie in the air at the moment, especially yeah. up on the northern beaches where we live. There's a, a lot of people out, you know, having good, wholesome fun, which, yeah, um, yeah which is, is nice. It's really nice to see. Now, um, playing an icon like Kenny is uh, one of those uh, challenges that an actor doesn't get very often. Your reaction when I asked you to play it was hilarious when I, I rang you and said look I've got a role for you and you said what is it and I said Kenny there was a pause and then you laughed for I think for about a minute tell me why what was that reaction Ben it's, it was really funny and you explained what it was um look uh, the um, <laughs> uh what's the best way to describe it? the physical similarities between Shane and myself are apparent um and it's been not necessarily a bugbear, but it's been something that's been around in my career for quite a long time. Uh, the confusion, the literal confusion. There have been a few moments uh, at industry events where I've been talking to someone for a good five or ten minutes and <laughs> I realise that they literally think they're talking with Shane. And I had a situation where a very prominent director had mentioned that they'd been desperate to try and work with me, but every time they rang my agent I was I was busy and and that struck me as odd uh, because although I am I'm very fortunate to to work quite a bit uh, I wouldn't say that I'm always busy and so I said well how about you just skip the agent and email me directly next time and I gave them my email address which features my name Ben Wood at whatever and they they looked and they went hmm yeah <laughs> yep <laughs> and so you ringing me to tell me that you had the part of a lifetime uh, I, I had to laugh because yeah. um, it, but it also presented a challenge to kind of, I guess, uh, I don't know, claim um, my own kind of unique take on the role um, and kind of say to everybody, hey, I'm not him, um, I'm me and, yeah. and, uh, and I can do it justice and also kind of pay homage to such a, a, an iconic character that, that he created. And yes. I had also worked with his brother, um, Clayton, on Top of the Lake 2. And I said to Clayton, uh, I really enjoy being in this TV series with you because for the first time, I'm not the person that looks the most like Shane Jacobson on the show. <laughs> <laughs> and he thought that was quite funny. <laughs> so, yeah, it was, I guess it was the kind of, everything kind of came full circle in yeah. that moment. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, um, Shane and uh, and Clayton uh, Jacobson have created such a wonderful character, and you're the only other person when we get to do it who would have played Kenny. Um, what when you were approaching that when you first got the script uh, written by the lovely Stevie Rogers, adapted from the film? Where do you begin? Because there's certain there's a certain look, there are certain rules, I guess, about the character of Kenny. But where do you start? As you say, making it your own i think um when stevie and i had a couple of chats about how he was going to do it i remember one thing that he said was um i you know i've watched the movie and i've transcribed the screenplay and there's about 25 minutes of dialogue 
Um, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so we need to extrapolate that out to a, a theatre performance. But also he said the one thing that that is that comes across is that it's 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 almost like it's an examination of of goodness and i think that when i got the script the first thing that jumped out at me was just how positive and how much he looks on the bright side of life even though his life is literally i mean yeah in the toilet like yeah. he, he spends all his time in the toilet so there's yeah. that great juxtaposition obviously shane made some pretty strong choices and very successful choices in uh, his characterization. And so I deliberately haven't watched the film again since yeah. we discussed yeah. this. Um, but it's, it is so iconic and, and, and that tone and the way that he speaks and his cadence and all those kind of things. When I got the script, I tried, um, you know, I tried a few as maybe yeah. Rolly from the big time. Yeah. A little bit more kind of like a days ago. Oh, there's my daughter in the background. <laughs> yeah, you've got a visitor. Hello. I do have a visitor. Yeah. Hello. This is Fry. Say hello. 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 Say hello. How You're are live. you? Bob? Live on air. You're live on air. <laughs> <laughs> and um and and I tried I tried some of my kind of more natural cadences. Yeah. And just there is a there is a, a way that Kenny speaks because he's all he's a lot about one liners and he's a lot about kind of the, the way that he attacks phrases and things like that, mm. it, it really does sit in a certain way in your mouth. And, and that was something that really that kind of jumped out at me, the genius of what they had created, was that it, it does have a, a necessary performance style. And so that challenge was going to be really interesting, I think, for you and I and Stevie, is to, is to not do a, a Shane impression. No, um, yes, that's right. Um, but also... Similar to Shakespeare or similar to, you know, like Williamson a, a yeah. bit. Yeah. You know, you change you change a word in a David Williamson line between shows. If you say it exactly how he wrote it, you kill. Yeah. You get the biggest laugh of the night. That's and right. if you change an adverb, you're gone. Yeah, uh, it's, <laughs> yeah it's quite, that's true. It's quite remarkable. And, yeah, it is. And, and that was the first kind of thing that, that jumped out on me. And then obviously when we did that little promo video, um, it just kind of all started to click and make a little bit more sense that, yeah. There's a certain way um, about it that goes, you know, beyond, um, I guess, how it is on the page. Yeah. yeah. He has that that lovely, like you say, sense of optimism, and there's a great curiosity about him too. And I think you're right when you're saying, uh, you know, Shakespeare and David Williamson, there's a certain rhythm and there's that wonderful way his delivery is is so clear but within that it's a bit like uh, uh improvising jazz i guess um that you can play with that with that when we get into the rehearsal room, you'll be able to uh, ben you mentioned the clip we have that clip to play we're going to play it uh right now and we'll have a look at you for the first time as kenny in uh amongst all the um bins and toilets <laughs> let's have a look Let's get down to business. I'm bringing my expo to the Ensemble Theatre. Ah, 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 Don't miss the International Portable Sanitation Convention with me, Kenny. Unite in shining overalls. Looks pretty good, eh? <laughs> Very good. I love that clip. Very good. Fantastic. How was that to do? That must have been fun, actually, to actually be there on set, as it were. Oh, look, it's it's quite remarkable once those overalls go on and you whack on the gloves and you're holding a plunger. Uh, it all comes, <laughs> yeah. it all comes pretty naturally. That's right. That's right. And and just for those watching, um, half of the ensemble staff were there as extras <laughs> following you around. Um, just going from, uh, you mentioned David Williamson's big time. Rowley was such a wonderful character. He's, again, he was very upbeat. He tried to be upbeat and see the best of life. But also he had that longing to be uh, something else, I think, and, and, and loved his best mate. 
how is it playing that? How is that doing doing the uh, David Williamson earlier on? Yeah, I, I mean that was a great um, experience for me. I haven't done a Williamson since I did the Removalists, um, oh, probably six or seven years ago, um, and I played the Removalist in that. So to revisit that was a lot of fun. Jeremy Waters, who played Rowan, uh, and I are very good personal friends, and um, I always like the way that David writes the conversations about men talking about real things. Yeah. Um, it, I, one thing I always found with Rolly is, you know, for all the one-liners he had and everything, um, the, the, the overwhelming kind of drive from him was to try and get through this deep sadness that he's going through by trying to stay upbeat and so when he finally does confess to his friend um, that he's had some suicidal thoughts, hmm. it it's not it's not at the centre of his being. It's it's something that he talks about briefly, and his friend comforts him, and it's out there. And that male that male mateship is like, okay, we understand that we can move on from there together without dwelling on it. And I think that. The way that David wrote that stuff is that he touched on something very serious with a beautiful deft touch, mm. um, and it resonated. But he didn't hammer the audience over the head with it, and it came as a bit of a revelation. And then it it formed, um, I guess, a trampoline for them to bounce off to to move forward. And I, I really loved, you know, Jeremy and I sitting in a bar is an, an unusual situation for us. So <laughs> we are, uh, but I, I found uh, I found. I found that to be really moving. I remember one show, um, I think I had a line, something like, um, blokes in their 40s with no jobs, no nothing, um, mm. you know, no women want to know. Yeah. And there was a lovely lady in the audience that had obviously become besotted with Rolly and she <laughs> said, oh, I'd like to know. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, lovely. that's great. I think we've done the job. And, and yeah, I mean, that play was um, – it was wonderful the way that it, it touched on male friendship and as as kind of almost a secondary storyline or or something like that. But that um that you know that's it's hard for men to talk about things and I think a lot of people might be going through that at the moment. And so absolutely, you know, that kind of, I have thought back to that a few times. Um, yeah, you know, the way that that resonated. Yeah, it was the uh, the friendship, the male friendship was sort of the spine of the play underneath all the other events. It was also the arc of the play, <clears throat> particularly um, with uh, Jeremy's character that he went on this journey and at the end he and Rowan became the friends they were again. It's almost they had to go through this whole uh, circle yeah, of life, so. yeah, which yeah, was terrific. Yeah. It's, it was wonderful too. And the laughs, I've said this before, with David Williamson plays, in rehearsal, it's one thing, it's, you, you can laugh, but once you get in front of an audience, those belly laughs that rip through the auditorium are just wonderful. Oh, they're, and they, <laughs> I remember Matty Minto during that rehearsal period, because, you, I mean, you know what it's like in a rehearsal room. It, yeah. it, it all becomes abstract after yeah. about week four. You, you're speaking yeah. into a void and yeah, no you one's assume laughing. that it's funny. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. then... And the jokes that you got your fellow cast members to laugh at in week one, they've now heard 50 <laughs> times since, and so they're not interested. <laughs> That's right. Um, and I just remember Matt just saying to me, uh, there was a moment of kind of that moment of existential crisis that we all have, you know, before we go up for an yeah. audience. Yeah. He said, just don't worry. It yeah. will land. Yeah. And, uh, and, and I just sort of thought back to my you know, the, doing the removalist and how no matter where we were in the country with that, it always, there were certain lines that always landed. And I just remember that first preview when we walked out and had that first scene at the bar with Jez and, uh, you know, told told the story about how, uh, you know, I, I needed a heart bypass and my kids were on drugs and yeah. my wife having an affair with a real estate agent for 12 years and the bang, 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 yeah. and just said them, with barely any emotion and we had to stop for minutes while the audience was <laughs> they did yeah. yeah and and it was just it was like it's uh yeah he's oh you know i mean he's still doing it after 50 yeah. odd years so he clearly knows what he's doing it's, yeah. it's remarkable and I, I think that sometimes you know how we touched on you know a way to do things and and shakespeare has a, a you know a very specific cadence and stuff like that i think some people might scoff or mm. laugh if you mentioned Shakespeare and Williamson in the same 
sentence. Um, but I think that there's value equally in each and there's mm. skill and there's yeah. um, discipline in each. And they might be from slightly different you know, spheres of the acting realm, mm. but uh, you can't discount that. Like you cannot discount that he knows how to write a play, turn a line and tell a story almost absolutely. better. Than him. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Indeed, um, and uh, hugely successful it has been, and he, he knows, and and he knows um, how that line is going to pay off, and also, you know, that pause sometimes is written into the script because there's going to be there's going to be a lot of laughter after a certain yeah, totally. killer line. Um, and going from that, of course, Ben, I thought, what a great idea for you then to play Henry VIII um, from really? one extreme to the other. <laughs> but it's interesting, isn't it, with Henry in The Last Wife, which is a, a terrific play that he has that sort of ochre bloke quality about him and the way you approach that he was earthy he's he's a king but he's he has that grounded quality to him i think that was the way that kate hennig wrote it yeah. um yeah. she's canadian isn't she yeah that's right they've, they've, they've got i think we've got very similar sensibilities to the canadians yes. um and uh i was surprised how well those sentences fit in my natural yep. speaking manner. Um, yep. I just remember one line that I used to love saying every every night, which was, um, uh, he said, uh, I think Kate said, "Oh, it's it's very exciting," and he said, oh, "It's um, it's nothing like creaming the French or anything exciting like that, but mm -hmm. you know, it'll do." <laughs> yeah, yeah that's and fine. like that's actually how it was written yeah, <laughs> wasn't yeah yeah um and you know henry the eighth himself was uh i wouldn't say that he was necessarily likened me to the commodore of a sailing club <laughs> um, which i thought was great you know yeah. a lot of those people that's right are quite rough and and ready mm. and um yeah but i think for our times it uh it certainly worked, and she's very specific in in the in the script that we don't put any affectations on. It's all our natural accent, and and we go from there. Yeah, which is why it works so well, I think. And we we completely identified then with those with that character, and it was taking so that the the yeah else. the period of time and making it relevant to today. And because it was set in modern dress, but we still followed the story of Henry and Kate, but it, it followed that all the way through. It, There's a funny. There's a funny story about Shieldsy, uh, Nikki Shields, who played yep. Kate. Yeah, wonderful. Um, her, oh, she's a remarkable actress mm. and a, of a woman as well. Uh, I had to fill in um, briefly uh, at very short notice in a pr production of Twelfth Night, uh, in which Kate was playing um, uh, Viola. Right. Yeah, um, and. Uh, I had to wear a costume that was far too small for me and we couldn't do it up. <laughs> so I was basically from here down, all chest and chest hair. And Shielsy said, oh, my God, you look more like Henry VIII than uh, Orsino. Right. Five years later. There you go. <laughs> wow, that was a premonition right there in the wings. Um, yep. Ben, we have some uh, questions for you too. We're just uh, Our Ben here is going to throw them out. If you can hear them, let me know. I can repeat them. This is sure. from Matthew. Who is the greatest actor you've worked with in the theatre? Did you get that, Ben? I did. Who is the greatest actor I've worked with in yep. the theatre? Yeah. That's, that's, that's a hard question to answer, uh, isn't it? Okay. It's, you don't want to offend anybody. A hard question. <laughs> I mean, I, I, assume, I assume I should say John Bell. Absolutely. Um, John taught me a lot. John kind of took me under his wing uh, in my early career at, Shea, at, um, at Bell. Uh, he also had me um, <laughs> understudy him as Falstaff, uh, at which point I said, uh, will I get to go on? And he said, absolutely not. <laughs> and 130 shows as Falstaff in the full fat suit. Yeah. But uh, sitting in those rehearsal rooms watching uh, him work, mm. um, he's a marvellous comedian, John yeah. Bell. Yeah. He's a very, very funny actor. He is. Um, John Bell is... Um, Phenomenal. Uh, and I did have the privilege of working with James Cromwell yep. um, on a David Williamson play, Rupert. Oh, yes. Um, yeah. 
and he's a lovely man and and uh, and a ferocious talent as well. And then, uh, um, oh, I mean, so many. There are so many. Yeah, Nikki Shields would be up there. Yeah, she's well. fantastic too. Andrew oh, good. That's you. great. And we have another another question. You do have another question. Uh, it's coming, Rachel, and she says you've played the most Aussie Henry the Eighth I've ever seen, uh, which was fantastic. Was that challenging playing such an iconic character in history and putting a fresh spin on it? Yeah, which we've sort of touched on. Oh, look, yeah, I guess so. I, I, I think the thing is that you've just got to write out that initial five or six sentences when you speak as Henry the Eighth, like I sound now. And the audience kind of recoils and goes, "Oh, that's how they're going to do this." Yes. And then by your first joke or you, you, you know, you, you, the first time you really put your foot down in anger or whatever, and and uh, yeah. and uh, an emotional moment or a real moment lands on them, uh, you realise they're along for the ride. Um, yeah. So, uh, but it's also very, it's very freeing. You can be a lot more um, present, I think. Uh, if you don't have to worry about a, an extra layer. Yeah, yeah. Because sometimes you can end up playing an accent. Yeah. And if you have to play an accent, then you're not doing the right job. That's right. And it, you made it your own in that way. And as soon, like you said, those first few sentences, people then go, oh, okay, this is how it's going. And I always think that, you know, if you go out into, onto the stage and say, I'm Hamlet, then people go, oh, right, okay. That you You're don't right. have to prove it after that. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, the, the baggage just go, it goes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And we have another another question. We've got two more. Uh, one is, uh, Kenny is a one-man show. Is the prospect of performing solo daunting? Uh-huh. A solo show. Have you done um, many of those, Ben? I've done a monologue as a, as a series of monologues. It was about seven minutes long. Right. Uh, <laughs> haven't, haven't done an 80-minute one-man show. <laughs> Uh, that starts yeah. in the toilet downstairs, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I actually, I could not wait to get stuck in. Yeah. Uh, I just thought the, the idea of a rehearsal room with uh, you and me, Mark, and, and mm. Stevie popping in and, and, uh, and, and, and no one else, I, th I thought that we had a chance to do something very, very special. Yeah. I think we will have a chance to do something very, very special we will. When, it, when it pops up. Um, yeah. Uh, so I... Uh, was actually relishing the challenge. And, look, I've emceed more weddings than I care to think about, <laughs> and I, I kind of feel like uh, there's, a, there's a little bit of, uh, of that holding court that, that, uh, that Kenny might have to do in our, uh, in our production. Absolutely, absolutely, uh, yes, but more control probably than emceeing a wedding, I would imagine. <laughs> well, less, 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 less drinking while yeah, we're doing yeah, it. Yeah, well, that's true. Yeah. Well, who knows? There's another question. We've got one more. One more. Um, We'd like to know if you, if you prefer drama or comedy. Did you get that, Ben? I did. Do I prefer drama or comedy? Mm. Um, uh, look, I don't think there's a huge difference between the two, uh, to be honest, in, in the way that you perform them. In comedy, you argue, arguably have to be more committed um, because you might yeah. have to ride a few waves that, uh, that aren't necessarily the ones you like. I, I like... <laughs> Uh, I, I do like to have audible audience reactions to let me know that they're on board and that we're going down the right path. But I think they are equally attainable in both um, comedy and drama. But if you kind of, I mean, if you have a look at uh, The Last Wife, Henry, um, you know, he's, he was equal parts funny and, and, and terrifying. Mm. Um, so I like, yes. I like the ability to... to to kind of sit in between the two and, and, and turn it on a dime. But if I had to choose one that I would do for the rest of my career, hmm. uh, you know, I'd probably do comedy. Yeah. It's interesting with drama that there's that pause that you can feel that's in, it's a silence in the theatre when you've said something, particularly Henry, if he turns on a dime and he's suddenly in anger for you, would say something. There's just that silence that you can just feel go around the auditorium, which is quite magic, actually. Yeah, there was a great moment in that dinner table scene when uh, um, Elizabeth is is talking about what they were teaching at school, mm, uh, yeah. what Kate had been teaching her at school, and uh, Nikki and I 
as she says something, we would lock eyes. Yeah. And you knew, the audience knew, that she knew that I was not happy. Yeah. And it just, <laughs> it yeah. just, it, it, oh, that moment every night, every yeah. night when that landed. You can and, feel uh, it. And then brilliant Emma Harvey just babbling on like, you know, she yeah. had never realized what she'd said. Yeah. It was uh, it was great. And I love I love those moments where, you know, the audience doesn't know whether to laugh or yeah. inhale or exhale so they don't do anything. Yeah, they that's right. That's right. Um, yeah. that's real, you know. And I think when this is all over, I think that people are gonna love being back in that communal environment that is the theatre and experiencing things with other people. Yeah. That shared energy that you know you can't really put your finger on. No, but. it's nothing like it. It's uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And we're I'm getting back. goosebumps thinking about it. Yeah, me too. I can't wait. I can't wait to work with you again, Ben, very soon on Kenny. It's been lovely oh, talking yeah. to you this morning. Thank you for your time. I know you've got Pleasure. lots of juggling going on there. Um, back, to, but, uh, back to school. <laughs> back to school, and uh, I'll see you very soon. Thank you, Ben. All right, mate. Thanks, Thanks for talking to, to us. To see you. Bye. Come on.